You're listening to a Pave Media show. Visit pavemedia.net for more podcasts and video entertainment. So, John, if you decided one day that for whatever reason, don't know why, but, you know, you wanted to murder me, uh huh. Um, using any item in this room, which item would you pick? Oh, and I've had a lot of time to think about the answer <laughs> to this question. Uh, I mean, there's so many options. I mean, I could drown you in the fish tank. <laughs> I could poison your cannelloni. Sure, sure. I mean, if you drown me in a fish tank, I'm sure that would probably end up in uh, the death of at least one of your fishes. I could live with it. It wouldn't be the first time. Okay, nice. And I could stick you in a little plant pot outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. like that. Uh, but I think the most apt way to kill you would probably be to, like, bludgeon you to death for podcasting, Mike. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah thank so, you. That's something to look forward to. Welcome, everybody, to Beyond the Box Set, podcast where we pitch prequels, sequels, and spin-offs to films that don't have any. I'm Harry. Joining me, as always, is John. Hello. And John, you've got a guest on for us this week. We do. It's another Patreon episode, so we're happy to be joined by Julio from the Contrarians podcast, a very good friend of the show. Hi, Julio. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Returning guest. Yes, returning guest. You may recognise Julio from the fantastic episode, That Thing You Do, which was a really fun film. I've, I've watched that again since the episode. I really enjoyed it both times. Oh, that's how you know that it worked, if it made you want to watch it again. I took it home to my parents and showed them. Oh, that's like the ultimate test. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And his parents have very discerning taste in films, so it's uh, it's quite quite an achievement to uh, to pass that test. (laughs) I mean, I would think that that thing you do was nowhere near as disturbing as what they're used to, so I don't know, did they like it? They did like it, yes. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, uh, not not quite up to their level of. Um, it's no bait. Horror. <laughs> God, they're weird, aren't they? They are strange people. <laughs> I mean, it explains a lot, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, having done such a fun film that time, we could only bring you back for a film that is just as much fun, if not more. If so. not more so. So, uh, um, well, I guess we'll get into it. But uh, yeah, so this is actually the end of our it's the last film in our series of films based off games. Mm-hmm. So it's been quite the journey, really. Yeah, I'm ready um, to put this one to bed. To be honest, really, oh, I, I've enjoyed it. <laughs> it's, it's. I, I, I think that this this season has more than any other season had its peaks and troughs. Definitely, yeah. it's. To be fair, I feel like it's been on an upward trajectory. Like the first I, one was I, the worst, I think so and then it's, each I, one's been gradually better than the one that preceded it. So. I think Battleship was a brilliant an entry to the season just like this is as low as it gets in the genre <laughs> well not, not just that this is as low as it gets it's just like this is the most straight game to film adaptation i think well, not, no well, not, that's, that's not quite right but just i'm thinking the listener submissions everybody just got out their system of just like okay we're doing hungry hippos no. we're doing everything well, that was you we're doing everything else <laughs> yeah. and oh, I, I i just loved that yeah. need for speed was great because I, I've never seen you more outraged at a film I've picked. <laughs> Not since Love Actually have I yeah, been yeah, so yeah. angry. <laughs> For different reasons. But yeah. And uh, yeah, then Truth or Dare was everything I wanted it to be. Yeah, as, I, as I said, that was yeah. just, it was a perfect movie. Well, let, let's not go nuts. Like, you, throw that word, you throw that term around way too much. Yeah. <laughs> it was entertaining trash. It was exactly what it was, it was what trying it, yeah, to be. It was exactly what it trying to be. I wouldn't say it was a perfect movie, but it was good fun. As is today's film, Clue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, John, have you seen Clue before? I have seen bits and pieces of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've ever sat down and watched it in full before. Okay. And Julio, have you seen it before? Uh, yes, I've seen it twice. And, you know, the first time I watched it, I hadn't even played the game. And it was just kind of a, a curiosity. And I didn't really care for it much. Um, it must have made no sense to you whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, even having played the game, much like, uh, let's say, like Battleship, the connections they make between the game and the and the movie don't make much sense. I mean, there is a murder, and then there's obviously a murder mystery, but there's mm-hmm. not really... I mean, I'm sure we'll get into it, but there's stuff where it just feels a little shoehorned, like when they pull out the mm-hmm. weapons that you have in the in the game. You know, how would you use a rope to kill someone? You know, definitely not the way they do it in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say the first 15, 20 minutes of this film are just all set up. Yeah. And then as, as soon as... As soon as Mr. Body is dead, mm-hmm. spoiler alert, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, as, as soon as he's dead, that's when the film really gets going, Yeah, I believe. I would say that the plot of this film is irrelevant. 
Like it <laughs> truly does not matter. Like, and that's fine. Yeah, but like, saying that, it's very convoluted. It is very complicated. Who, you know, I have no idea what happens. No, no, I say it is. This, this is my second time watching it now. Yeah. So, do you guys watch the one that has the three endings, or did you yeah. just pick an yeah. ending? Okay. Yeah, the first time I watched it, I I just saw the one with one ending, and then uh, many many years later, because by then I played the game, and uh, my girlfriend, then now wife, uh, she's big into board games, so I knew that she liked Clue, so I bought the movie for her, and we watched it again. And I had the three endings, and that really adds, I think, a new dimension in both mm-hmm. ways. Because one, it makes you realize that the plot really doesn't matter because they can yeah. change who made who who was the murderer mm-hmm. in five minutes. Yeah, because right. in each version, in each ending, Tim Curry's identity is completely different. Yeah. So it's entirely, ar- <laughs> it is entirely arbitrary. Like, no, everything that's happened before, it's like an episode of Murder, She Rose or something. It, nothing that kind of precedes it matters. It's, it's just, but it, it's complete nonsense, but that's fine. Cause mm. it's no, you're not really there for an actual whodunit. No. And if you are, you're going to be confused and disappointed. But, yep. But if you're here for like just some solid campy good fun. Then, oh, this film is so camp. It is it's. I, I mean, there's I, a character in it called Colleen Camp. Yeah, the actress is called Colleen Camp. Like, <laughs> it's like when Mark Webb directed Spider Man. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> um, yeah. It felt like a Carry On film. It did have that vibe. Are you familiar yeah. with Carry On films, Yulu? They're quite a British kind of thing. Uh, no, describe. Them. I might know them, and I just don't know that that's what they're. Called. I don't know if they ever really travelled outside Britain, but basically, they were a series of films in the '60s that were just like farcical comedies filled with big breasted ladies running around and getting mm. top, topless for no reason it was yeah kind of like benny, benny hill okay yeah, i know that, benny hill yeah so it's, it's in that kind of vein of british comedy there's some good ones and there's some really terrible ones but uh, mm-hmm. yeah it, did, it definitely had that did they feeling. all did they all know what they were making like, think, like like for example all the women involved did they know what they were in well in this or in carry on in carry on oh sure for sure they knew okay cool but i, I mean in this film one of the great joys of this one for me is that everyone knows exactly what movie they're in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it really adds to it. Um, should we just go around and say who our favourite characters are? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, I ranked them. First? I have my... You my ranked them? Rank from top to... to okay, let's do that, because that's a good way to re- introduce the characters. Yeah, because there's no point attempting to describe the plot, because no. <laughs> the, the plot is... The, it's clued up. Yeah, let's just move it's past like the plot Somebody dies, and then they need yeah. to figure out who did it. Mr. Body dies. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Not somebody, Mr. Yeah, body. Mr. Body. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, um, who so, goes first? Yeah. Uh, you, you, you go first. No, give us your ranking and uh, just tell us, tell us everybody. Okay, so I have, uh, to me, I mean, going from, and I don't know if it's like best character, I would say the, the character I was happier to see, so I guess the funniest, mm-hmm. uh, or the, the one that pulled it off better uh, for me, uh, starting at number one would be uh, Mr. Green, which is Michael mm-hmm. McKean. Um, oh, yeah. Which, this is the first time I've watched the movie, so this is my third time watching the movie, and this is the first time that I've known who he is. You know, mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. I look at him, I was like, oh yeah, Spinal Tap, and you know, Better Call Saul. Mm-hmm. It's maybe that added to the enjoyment, because I see him play something, you know, I don't know, it's yeah, a lot better it, when you know who the guy me, is. Definitely. But which do you think uh, was the, we'll get back to you, your ranking in a second, but which do you think was the best of the three endings? So, I have mixed feelings, because I mm-hmm. think that, Story-wise, the one that works the best is the third one, or at least, you know, if we're going by the order that they play on the DVD, mm-hmm. the one where everybody kills somebody. Yes. And, yeah. and uh, Mr. Green, is turns out that he was the FBI agent, and, mm-hmm. you know, that's... I, lo- I, he I loved it because... I loved it because of his initial uh, confession of just like, yes, I'm a homosexual, and whatever he did there. And then at the end, he's just like, and now I'm going to go and sleep with my wife. Boom, film yeah. <laughs> And credits. I, I think yeah. that that one's the one that works the best. But honestly, the wife line bothers me, <laughs> and it mm-hmm. didn't bother me until I watched it this time. Where mm-hmm. I, it was like it was just so much funnier. Uh, I, I don't know because it's set in the fifties, right? So yeah. it made his character. It made so much sense his backstory that he was mm-hmm. a guy that worked uh, for the government but it was gay and that was his big secret and so for them to undo that felt like it just made the story everything else in that ending makes the story better and that mm-hmm. little thing I think if for the sake of a joke they made the story worse but that's mm-hmm. of course just me nitpicking at this point it's it's still the strongest ending yeah mm-hmm. and it was so silly like yeah I would, I would normally get annoyed with a cat with like a like gay panics kind of joke but this film is so stupid anyway that it didn't, oh, yeah. I just was like and it's such a stupid line it's such a great stupid line to mm-hmm. end on so yeah that didn't particularly <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I, I, I just laughed. I thought it was hilarious. I think it's the delivery is just not... Yeah, his delivery was great. I also really like... They don't do loads of gay jokes, which I appreciate because they could have gone a lot worse at the time. But I really liked the one where uh, Yvette the Maid says, oh, yeah. it, in her hilarious French accent, It is dark and I am frightened of the dark. Who will come with me? Yeah. And all the other men, men, men are like, I'll go. Me too. No, thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just doesn't care. <laughs> bon, but it is dark upstairs and I am frightened of the dark. Will anyone go with me? I will. I will. No, thank you. Um, mm-hmm. I had number two, Miss Scarlet, Leslie Ann Warren, uh, mm-hmm. which I think, you know, talk about like being in on the joke. I think she really goes into it because she's playing that this, this sexy character. Oh, she is yeah. vamping it up to the max. I love it. <laughs> she was the most fun for me to watch mm-hmm. like when she's not the main focus of a scene because mm-hmm. even when she's just standing in the background she's always just doing like a pose or something <laughs> just she's just having a great time and yeah I, even the her... way she walks every time there because yes. you have a lot of people walking in groups here and mm-hmm. uh, you, she's always the stand out there um, yeah um but did you know who was supposed to play that character originally no carrie fisher really yeah, but she had to drop out because she went to rehab. She was having some drug problems at the time. Uh, but yeah, it was Leslie Ann Warren was like a last minute replacement. That would have been really interesting. I, I don't know that I've seen Carrie Fisher do that kind of character before. Yeah, I mean, she's, I mean, Carrie Fisher, I love Carrie Fisher and she's very funny and very sexy. So she would have worked, but I don't know. I find it hard to imagine anyone, everyone in this film is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I find it really hard to imagine anyone other than Leslie Ann Warren just because she is, she's great. Well, I am willing to believe you. I, too, am being blackmailed for something I didn't do. Me, too. And me. Not me. You're not being blackmailed? Oh, I'm being blackmailed, all right. But I did what I'm being blackmailed for. What did you do? Well, to be perfectly frank, I run a specialized hotel and a telephone service which provide gentlemen with the company of a young lady for a short while. Oh, yeah? What's the phone number? So, I got Tim Curry at number three. Uh, Ooh, yes. What's worth? Which I mm-hmm. guess it feels like a little bit like an insult because you would think Tim Curry when you think Clue you think at, at least I think Tim Curry before anybody else. But oh sure, time, Def- definitely. Yeah. I just I just felt that as good as he is, McKean and Leslie and Warren are are even stronger. But mm-hmm. he's but great. And I don't know. I mean, he has that that freedom sort of that he's. I was gonna say he's not playing a character from the game, but he is playing a character because the butler is kind of a yeah. a staple of the murder mystery. So I mean. Talk about chewing the scenery. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised there was any set left. He was just like <laughs> chomping on down on it. It was insane, but it was so good. Like, imagine keeping that energy. Yeah. Like, I- I'm sure that it wasn't all filmed in a very small space space of time. Like, imagine he had breaks between cuts, but even so, yeah, especially at the end when he's just sp- he spends a solid twenty minutes just running around, <laughs> sprinting doing around a, yeah. a mansion. <laughs> I like someone asked, um, I think Colonel Mustard asks Tim Curry, like, what do you do? I'm the butler. What do you do? I buttle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. There's like some of it is just such simple writing. Yeah, it's, it's it, yeah. The, the stupid jokes, but the delivery is what makes it. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. All the actors are just. Delivery and the timing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Doorbell rang! And it was you! Yes. I asked you for your coat, and I recognised you as Colonel Mustard, and I prevented you from telling me your real name because I didn't want any of you to use any name other than your pseudonym, and I introduced myself to you as the butler, and I ran across the hall to the library. And then Yvette met you, and smiled, and poured you a drink. And the doorbell rang, and it was Mrs. White looking pale and tragic, and I took her coat and hung it up. And I introduced Mrs. White to Colonel Mustard. Hello. Hello. And I noticed that Mrs. White and Yvette flinched. Then there was a rumble of thunder and a crash of lightning. And to make a long story short, Too late. one by one you all arrived. Okay, so we're at three. Uh, number four, I don't remember the actor's name, uh, mm-hmm. but, you know, the guy that played uh, Colonel Master, Mustard. Oh, Martin Bull. Oh, he was great. He is <laughs> great. He's a lot more low-key than everybody else, but it's kind of yeah. what you were saying about Leslie and Warren. Like, he's always, when you see him in the background, his reactions are always on point. He always felt like either the the reaction to a joke or the punchline of a joke. Yes. And it just always worked so well. So how did you know Colonel Mustard works in Washington? Is he one of your clients? Certainly not. I was asking Miss Scarlet. Well, you tell him it's not true. It's not true. Is that true? No, it's not true. Ha-ha! So it is true. A double negative. Double negative? You mean you have photographs? That sounds like a confession to me. In fact, the double negative has led to proof positive. I'm afraid you gave yourself away. Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? You don't need any help from me, sir. That's right. 
Okay, next up I have uh, Madeline Kahn, which honestly mm -hmm. I found her funnier in other movies, but here mm -hmm. she has that awesome delivery of flames when she's explaining <laughs> how she felt, how the jealousy made her feel. And yeah. that alone bumps her ahead of like, everybody else on the list. Oh, I am so happy that we finally get to do a movie with, with Madeline Kahn. I've been wanting to do one of her movies for a while because she is one of my all-time favorite actresses. She is so weird. <laughs> She's such an oddball. And I, I just love her so much. And yeah. yeah, it's crazy to me that like, because Harry, do you know the when this movie was released in the 80s, it was a huge, mm. huge flop. Right. Um, but also the three endings were all released separately. So mm -hmm. the idea was that people would go and see it three times. It would be triple the box office, which ah. obviously did not happen. <laughs> but uh, that means that like two thirds of people who saw this movie didn't see the flame speech, right. which is probably like one of the five funniest moments in the whole film. Like, <laughs> oh, that's right. Wow. No, that's that's nutty. Yeah. Mm. But then another two thirds didn't see Les Dan Warren going, my business is secrets. Yeah. So everyone missed something. You know? mm. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody truly won in that one. No, until the video came out and then they saw them all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they've done that a, a few times and I've never really felt that it, it's paid off. They did that mm -hmm. on the uh, Unfriended sequel that they did, I think it was last year. Uh, okay. it, was, it was the same thing. I think there were like two different endings and you only got to see one if you saw it in theaters, which is kind of a bummer. Of course, now in this day and age, you can just YouTube after a week and they'll have all the endings online it, so it's, different. it's weird they did that for a film that's about the internet and like the dark web and stuff yeah. and yes. essentially everyone's just got to torrent it to get the, yes. to get the yeah, second yeah. ending <laughs> it's meta it's very meta yeah. <laughs> it struck me that all of the endings are super abrupt yes they really are so it's like when there's three of them it makes sense cause it's like okay it's just kind of you know mm. but if you just watch one of them you'd be like oh that's the end. It's really just like, oh, I guess the movie's just literally stopped now on a freeze frame. Yeah, I, I would not appreciate that in a cinema. No, not really. <laughs> but, That's uh, yeah. why it bombed. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. You were jealous that your husband was stopping her that. That's why you killed him, too. Yes. Yes, I did it. I killed Yvette. I hated her so much. It, it, the, it, flame, flames. Flames on the side of my face, breathing, breath, heaving breaths, heaving. We got what, like three characters left, right? So I'll just, uh -huh. I'll just run through them real fast. Uh, so uh, Christopher Lloyd as mm -hmm. Professor Plum, who's okay. just mm -hmm. the perv. And I, yeah. I think that's just like, because it's funny, but it's just kind of one note. You know, that's like his one thing. He doesn't really have, at least I can't remember any actual funny moments other than when he's being a pervert. Yeah, he he was my least favorite character, and I love Christopher Lloyd. It's just because he didn't feel like he had a lot to do. Mm. All he did was, yeah, he feels up Miss Scarlet at the beginning, and there's a couple of funny little physical comedy scenes later on when they're like molesting the dead bodies, but <laughs> which we'll, we'll talk about. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, on the whole, he just felt a bit like filler, like they hadn't really written anything particularly for him to do, which is a shame because Christopher Lloyd is obviously brilliant and hilarious in many mm -hmm. other things. So right yeah. out of out of everybody, he I think he's the closest to the straight man. He gets the the, the straight speeches where he's just you know it, there's mm -hmm. nothing funny about them. He's just explaining stuff. I mean, even the Chris, yeah. uh, Tim Curry, he's doing a lot of exposition, but. The way he's giving it is, is kind of funny. Um, oh, it's hilarious! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Christopher Lloyd is just you know regular kind of outrage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then I still put him on top of uh, Miss Peacock because her thing is just that she screams a lot. She yeah. has a few funny mm. lines, so you know she has that. But also just the shrillness of the of the screaming kind of got on my nerves. Her line readings as well are just so funny to me. Like her long rambling speech at the dinner table. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Well, somebody's got to break the ice, and I guess it should be me. And oh, I've, I don't know who any of you are, but I'm sure we're gonna have the best time. Oh, this soup is delicious. I love pot. She just goes on and on. And I know. On. I'll actually just take a minute to breathe no. so that anybody else can talk. Because like, yeah. is this breaking the ice or what? Yeah, it does it. And, and then everyone's actually... reactions after it is yeah. like a spoon halfway held to the face, and they're just <laughs> frozen. It's like what? Yeah. <laughs> But the other bit I really liked from her was when Kenan must have just saying that they should all go and split into pairs and wander around the house mm -hmm. for reasons. And she's like, but one of us will be killed. And he says, well, you know, Miss Peacock, in, uh, when you make an omelette, you've got to break a few eggs. Any good cook will tell you that. Yeah. And she's just, well, look what happened to the cook. <laughs> 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 oh, it's just great. Well, 
someone's got to break the ice, and it might as well be me. I mean, I'm used to being a hostess. It's part of my husband's work, and it's always difficult when a group of new friends meet together for the first time to get acquainted. So I'm perfectly prepared to start the ball rolling. I mean, I, I have absolutely no idea what we're doing here, or what I'm doing here, or what this place is about, but I am determined to enjoy myself, and I'm very intrigued, and oh my, this soup's delicious, isn't it? We have very little time left, so we'll split up into pairs. Pairs? Yes. Wait a minute. Suppose that one of us is the murderer. If we split up into pairs, whichever one of us is left with a killer might get killed. Then we would have discovered who the murderer is. But the other half of the pair would be dead. This is war, Peacock. <gasps> Casualties are inevitable. You cannot make an omelet without breaking eggs. Every cook will tell you that. But look what happened to the cook. And then at the very end, I have Yvette. Uh, as far Aww. as the, I mean, you know, she's fine. Everybody's fine. You know, yeah. most of them are more than fine. They're great. But Yvette is just kind of, you know, she's just the joke is that she's eye candy for the most part. And so there's yeah. there's not really not much to it. Oh, I don't know. I think her French accent was hysterical. You have actually missed uh, my favorite three characters. Oh, OK. Um, my, my number one is the singing telegram. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She just comes out of nowhere, yeah. and then she's gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, which, yeah, that was great, just because it was just so yeah. unexpected. She was Christopher Lloyd's um, reason in one of the endings. Right. The only reason for her to be there is because she's his ex-patient or something? Right, she's the it patient. It makes no that, sense. Well, yeah. She's, yeah. she's the patient that caused him to lose his license. I think that's, yeah. at least in that ending. Mm. Yeah, but other than that, like she is a completely random little moment that she just pops up, sings a song, and dies. And it's just great. Yeah. <laughs> I am your singing telegram. Um, and uh, my 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 favourite uh, two and three character are uh, Annette's breasts, which yeah. are characters in their own right. Yeah, in this. You mean your vets, not yeah. Annette? Even. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You don't even know her name. It's, just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's not important. Yeah. Yeah, I have to make a little defence for you there because the fake French accent was just so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, is, is that our accents is sort of like your second passion right after wigs? Would that just? And I think they might be. Yeah, they're definitely up there in things I enjoy. And I think the fact that this one was very deliberately bad, like it's, it's fake. We're in the world of the film as well as being yeah. fake. Like because there's a few scenes when she drops it, like because mm. she's got some kind of secret identity which we don't ever really find out about but again it doesn't no. matter in the slightest mm -hmm. but uh, like there were certain lines that she said that were genuinely incomprehensible to me yeah. but i didn't know what she was even trying to say <laughs> like, <laughs> and just all the french cliches like i have had zip branded too oh mon dieu yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there a i'm just gonna start quoting the film now is there a ladies room on this floor wee oui, wee oui, madame no i just like to pat yeah. my nose yeah. <laughs> So stupid, so stupid, but I just loved it. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to, um, um, is there a little girl's room in the hall? Oui, oui, madame. No, I just want to powder my nose, thank you. So, the murder weapons, how do you guys feel about that? Um, they, they were just... I, they, they were crowbarred in. Yeah, they, 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 had, they had to be put in, I guess, yeah. somehow. Um, and it was either crowbar them in or try and write them in. Yeah. And I, I'm glad that they just... Suddenly, here they are. Yeah. Like, here they are for no reason. They may be used, and then they're locked away, so they're not going to get used again. And then, yeah, they, they didn't come up with weird um, scenarios as to why, you know, somebody's got the rope or someone's got the lead piping. It was yeah. Just, it was just, yeah. it, well, Mr. Body comes in, doesn't he? And he says, he gives them all a different murder weapon and says, well, one of you has to kill Tim Curry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, but they're all, they're all such different weapons. Like, it's so bizarre. Like, the very idea that, like, he could just as easily be killed with a rope as he could be by a, an actual gun. Like, yeah. Right. Clearly whoever, the rope wasn't whoever used. Whoever got the rope. Whoever had the rope was clearly innocent because he wasn't strangled. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he wasn't shot. He wasn't stabbed. No, no, no. Well, he didn't die. So we we'll, we'll guess we'll never know. Yeah. Oh, that's another good thing about that last ending, the, the third ending, that mm -hmm. uh, Michael McKean gets to say, if you're wondering who shot Tim Curry, it was me in the lobby with the gun. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah they, they like, got it in there. They got it in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They all did it. But if you want to know who killed Mr. Body, I did. In the hall. With the revolver. Uh, should we get to some drinking games? Yeah, sure. Alright, so I got drinking games. I got five. I don't know how many you guys have. Cool. 
But I kind of get the feeling that we might have some crossover because some of them are I'm just sure we will, so yeah. obvious. I imagine we will. So, uh, Julio, do you want to go first? Um, okay. So, my first one is uh, when men are pigs slash cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I think cleavage has got to be a drinking game. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got cleavage here as my first one. I've got well, I've got cleavage, but as a more specific one, drink every time Yvette is shot from an overhead angle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they really lean into it. Like, <laughs> there's, there's so many pointless scenes of her going upstairs. Like, mm. I mean, the scene when she, <laughs> the stair scene where her and Mr. Green are going up the stairs together. Mm-hmm. It's like it's so engineered. Just for her, it's her chin is in her cleavage at this point. Yes. It's just absurd. <laughs> yes. <It's> like, <laughs> And one of my favourite little moments at the beginning of the film when oh, when Miss Peacock arrives hmm. and she sees Yvette, I think Yvette hands her a drink and she just, Miss Peacock just looks directly into Yvette's yeah. cleavage and then just makes this kind of like stunned face like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I think most yeah. characters get to stare into her cleavage at least once during the movie. Oh, oh. They, they do. And I love how nobody is subtle about it. No, either. no, no, not subtle. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is great. Okay, so mine is uh, drink whenever a secret passage is opened. Oh, that was good, yeah. Not just for the first time, just any time. Yeah, no, they, they, they mm. brought them back a lot. Yeah, that, that was a fun little callback to the game. That yes, and I tell you what, I love a secret passage. Like mm-hmm. any, any game, or well, any house that's got a secret passage, that is mm-hmm. an ideal place to live. Have you been in many of them? Oh, one or two. Okay, sure. <laughs> That's on the bucket list. I mean, if you grow yeah. up watching these movies, you want to at least at one point just push a book or you know, yeah. pull a lever and then an entire wall like, turns around. But also the cool thing mm-hmm. about the passageways is that they didn't just do a callback to the game. They actually incorporated it into the story. I mean, as, as much sense yeah. as the story makes, it's, it's cool that they, <laughs> you know, the way that the murders happened have to do with the passageways. Okay, so... I have drink when Mrs. Peacock reacts to something. Oh, God. She has some of the best reactions <laughs> for me. I mean, I've mentioned, obviously, the, there's lots of screaming that she does. Mm-hmm. Um, the bit where Tim Curry says, my wife had friends who were socialists. And then she just kind of just this, lets out this long, horrifying <laughs> gasp and like, clutches her pearls. It's great. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Any time she just, yeah, reacts. She's great. Um, this one is it's pretty obvious. Uh, when mm-hmm. people run from one room to another... Yeah, I've got oh, that. Solid. Yeah, solid, it's, yeah, it's like a Scooby Doo episode. It's yeah. great. I love all the shots of them just running from corridor to corridor. Yeah, it's a, they must have had quite, especially Tim Curry must have had quite the workout film in this film because they are yeah. running around upstairs, downstairs, all over the place. Like, yeah. they must be exhausted. Um, okay, mine is a drink for every death. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's a good one. Do you have a favourite death? Um, yeah, it's the uh, telegram girl. The te- of course, well, of course. Yeah. That's pretty good. Right. I don't know why I asked that question. It's so <laughs> Uh, I mean, every, every, everybody else is just like, oh, they're dead. You yeah, know, like, you, exactly. don't, you, don't, you don't see any, really. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but, I felt so. a little sad for her vet because she, she felt like she was actually a, a character. The rest were just like turned up and were just bodies, but she was like, oh, I'm having fun with you. Mm. <laughs> Man, that accent really worked for you. <laughs> yeah, it really did. Yeah, it covered, yeah, it, it, uh, covered a, lot, a lot of sins, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, she was just, I, I felt like she was in, really embracing. Anyway, uh, yeah, is it your turn, Harry, or was that? Was that yours? Deaths. Yeah. Drink for deaths. Oh, okay. Drink when somebody falls over. Oh, yeah. I've, I've got that one, actually. Drink every time somebody, brackets, dead or alive, falls, falls to the ground. Yes, yeah. But that, that's probably one that would get you pretty ham. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Green seems to be the most clumsy. He seems yeah. to fall over constantly. Yeah. Excellent. Well, also the amount of times they drop the cook. Yes, they do drop the... <laughs> that put... Well, my next one is... Uh, sorry to have two in a row, but my next one is drink every time a dead body is manhandled. Yeah. Because... <laughs> That poor cook, that poor woman, like, honestly, like, she only gets one line and she gets stabbed through the back and yeah. then her body is just flung around all over the place. Just, mm-hmm. And the bit, obviously, when they're trying to fool the police officer by basically molesting all the corpses. Yeah. Like, so they've got the cooks being stood up against the curtain and Mrs. Peacock's behind playing the arms and the mm-hmm. guy's making out with her. Mm-hmm. Mr. Body is dead drunk. Yeah. <laughs> dead right he is. Dead right he is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they really lent into those jokes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, every time a dead body is mistreated, it's definitely. I also like when uh, when a vet does die, when they find the body, the reaction mm-hmm. because she's like the fifth or sixth character to be killed or something, and they'll just walk in, see the dead body, and they just kind of like shrug, walk out. Yeah, they're, they're so tired at this point. Like, <laughs> of course, she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my next one is probably a little too general now that I'm thinking back on the movie, but I just wrote screaming. And oh yeah, there's there's a lot of screaming in in the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, most of, especially once the first death happens, it's just nonstop screaming for like thirty minutes. Somebody had to stop her from screaming. 
uh, yeah. Any more? Any more drinking games? Are we all done? Uh, oh, I just last one was uh, drink for lightning. Like ah, flash, oh, crash, yeah. crashes of lightning, like, yeah, or thunder even. It crashes of thunder and lightning. Yeah, yeah. I got a uh, drink for silly verbal misunderstandings. Oh, Wait. that's a good one. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, there's one where um, is it? I think it's uh, Colonel Mustard is asking Tim Curry if there's anybody else in the house, <laughs> and they go on for like five minutes, and it's great. oh, they really let that play out. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> A double negative is a positive. <laughs> and then when they count in the bullets in the gun as well at the end, one plus one is two. two yeah. Two, three. <laughs> oh, oh, then, yeah. I suppose you could also drink for uh, shots of the chandelier as well. Yeah. yeah. That is really like Chekhov's chandelier. Like yeah. I, I was disappointed it didn't in any at any point crush anyone because I really felt like it was. Well, I think I, th- I, th- I think that would have just been a bit much for their special effects. That yeah, I think that's probably why they didn't really show any deaths that no. were particularly difficult. No, that's true. Yeah, I don't think this was like an expensive movie. No, so, yeah. and then they just dropped chandeliers. But to be fair, they must have actually done that. Oh yeah, like actually dropped chandeliers seconds after an actor was standing there. True. Yeah, I'm sure that was very highly choreographed because yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. not a that's not a green screen that actually happened. No. Yeah. Yeah. I bet it was like, well, we can only do this once, guys. So for God's sake. Colonel Mustard's reaction, that freeze frame at the end, that's probably real. Like, there was something just... Oh, sure, you, you would jump, wouldn't you? Like... Yeah, maybe he wasn't told about it. Hmm. Speaking of fun reactions, <laughs> um, the... The, 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 the director's there, like, he needs to get off that spot in two seconds or he's going to die. <laughs> yeah. and just, luckily, he decided to walk forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but speaking of reactions, the iconic flames on the side of my face speech <laughs> was uh, actually completely ad-libbed by the actress really yeah that wasn't in the script at all cool. and you, if, if you watch you can see tim curry and martin moore both like really struggling to not break into laughter like, <laughs> great That's i think it's the only ad-lib in the film awesome mm. yeah she is so funny and i don't think i talked enough about her look like when she came in in like full black widow mm-hmm. like with the leather beret and the, it was like she'd literally come directly from her husband's funeral <laughs> yes, it was. like she just buried him and just turned up the party immediately afterwards yeah. like and she's got the cape that she kind of flings off and yeah it was great <laughs> well that was good actually because she was like well why am i mrs white yeah and then she flings the cape and it's like oh god my eyes yeah yeah it's like so just a <laughs> yeah. blinding flash of light. <laughs> it's a matter of life after death now that he's dead i have a life yes <laughs> Him. What did he do for a living? He was a scientist. Nuclear physics. What was he like? He was always a rather stupidly optimistic man. I mean, I'm afraid it came as a great shock to him when he died, but he, he was found dead at home. His head had been cut off, and so had his, uh, you know. I had been out all evening at the movies. Do you miss him? Well, it's a matter of life after death. Now that he's dead, I have a life. But he was your second husband. Your first husband also disappeared. But that was his job. He was an illusionist. But he never reappeared. Uh, he wasn't a very good illusionist. Okay, well, before we get to sequels, I always talk about Patreon. We're av- we are available on patreon.com slash set, and you can support us for as much or as little as you like. If you do, if you're one of those great people, like Julio is, mm-hmm. then you get a bonus show every... It's going to say every week, but sometimes it's more. Where we review films that are normally in the cinema, but we've actually done a bit of a an Oscars roundup recently where we've reviewed every Best Picture uh, nomination. Now we're doing a few others mm-hmm. after the Oscars. So that's good. Uh, also, if you become a Patreon, you can, as we are doing right now, we have a Patreon episode. You can choose the film for us to do on the main show. You can guest if you want. You don't have to. Mm-hmm. And if you want us to talk about a film that already has sequels, well, we'll do that on a bonus show. Yeah. And finally... Uh, once a month, every Patreon supporter gets a 30-second advert slot where they can advertise anything they want to. Mm-hmm. Julio, can you give an example of an advert? Um, so, The Contrarians, you know, I've done a few. You guys were the first uh, show that I, that I guested on, and I've done a few since then. Oh, wow. And you would think I would have gotten better at pitching the show, but I don't know. We rage against the Run Tomatoes machine, that's what we say. We just pick a movie that's either rotten or fresh and Run Tomatoes. And we make the case against that rating. So if it's a fresh movie that all the critics love, we'll talk about it as if it was a rotten movie and vice versa. If it's a movie that the critics hate, then we we praise it like it's a great work of art. Uh, and, you know, in a comedic fashion, that's the first half of the show. And then once we get to the second half, we'll talk, then we tell you how we really feel. And sometimes 
it turns out that we do love the unpopular movie or that we hate the popular movie. Uh, so it's kind of fun to just play with expectations because you never know what we're going to say on the second half. Yeah, that's good. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a fun show. It's great. I know that we passed on the gospel of um, The Boy Next Door quite recently that you did, which is... Uh, yes. I'm, enjo- I'm enjoying passing that movie on, <laughs> letting more of the world experience that classic, I, classic movie. Share it like I a virus. I am. Yeah. That, uh, that really, we should make it our mission that every podcast that deals with movies should review the boy next door at some yeah point. it's screw the room yeah the, it's the, the boy next door is the real like <laughs> rite of passage i think <laughs> my work continues anyway <laughs> cool okay so yeah all that's available on patreon.com forward slash beyond the box set now uh who wants to go first me you want to go first cool okay we'll have julio in the middle then and i will bring us on home all right so I've actually got three ideas. Oh, you've stolen my uh, concept. Fine. Yeah. Have, have you got multiple No, ideas I've only got one this week, so it's fine. Great. Go ahead. Yes, so uh, I, well, I believe that I'm starting with my weakest. Okay, but, sure. Uh, work your way up, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so this one is called Clue, the movie. Okay, well, it's sensible. <laughs> it's, yeah. The logic is irrefutable. <laughs> <laughs> so it's set in present day LA, uh-huh. and this is a movie about the making of a movie called Clue, the movie. Oh, Okay. Are you with me? I'm with you, yeah. So, uh, the making of the original movie or the making of a new of a, 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 a movie? Any yeah. movie based. It's still based on Cluedo. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. So, the director has insisted that everybody stays in character, even when offset. Okay. Um, just to, you know, method acting. Mm-hmm. Um, things get out of hand when Mr. Body is actually dead. Okay. Um, on set. Suddenly, uh, a real-life murder mystery investigation begins between the principal cast members and the director. Okay. The director is also starring in the film as the butler. Okay. So the cast, Miss Scarlet is going to be played by Jane Krakowski. Like it. Yeah, that, that is perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mrs. White, Julianne Moore. Yeah, I can see that. They do look somewhat similar. But those two? Madeleine Kahn and Julianne Moore, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Sure, I mean, that should I, be great. To be fair, I wasn't recasting Clue. Oh, sure. just, I, I'm just, just, just yeah, think, thinking clue. of cast members that fit with these kind of characters. Okay, sure. Um, <clears throat> Mrs. Peacock, Tilda Swinton. Interesting, Ooh. interesting. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Reverend Green, Jonah Hill. Okay, yeah. Can he can do that. some things. Have you, have you, you've seen Maniac? I've seen bits of Maniac. I've not finished it yet, but yeah. Have you got to the bit where he's a bird? No. I've watched, when I oh, say I've seen good. bits, I've watched one episode. I really need to... Right. You, you, I'll, you, I'll, you would love the, the, where that show goes. Okay, I'll go back to it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit where Sally Field chases a person trying to give him a hug. Okay. <laughs> it's just... I don't know. I just found it hilarious. Okay, no, I'm I, sorry. Yeah. The first episode didn't really do it for me, but I'll, I'll, I'll give it another go. Okay, right. sure. Um, Colonel Mustard, Alec Baldwin. Oh, that's good casting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I really think that he could do quite I well on that. I can see that working very well, yeah. And uh, Professor Plum, Charlie Day. Yeah, I can see that, yeah, sure. He's got something. He, he can be a bit crazy and sort uh-huh. of... Yeah. I imagine he's like a posh professor. He, he, he does that a few times. Sure, sure, sure. Like a fake posh professor. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm kind of thinking of him, his role in um, Hotel Artemis, if you remember. Oh, yes, 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 okay. Uh, that was quite a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the butler slash director, Sam Rockwell. Okay, yeah. I feel like he can do crazy high energy. Yes, he does. Yeah, I like that a lot. The weapons okay. would include... I've done, I've done these as well. Okay. Uh, the weapons would include things you find on set, such mm-hmm. as a rubber dagger, mm-hmm. a prop gun. Mm-hmm. Somehow these kill people. <laughs> a boom pole. Mm-hmm. A giant fan. Oh, that's in a, a good one. In a wind machine. Get decapitated by it, yeah. Mm-hmm. A wig. Yeah. Oh, like, throttled, like have it shoved down the throat or something. Something, yeah. Death by wig. Love it, yeah. Stage fright. <laughs> yeah. Stage fright is a yeah. weapon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, it's just an audience chasing someone around. <laughs> yeah, <isn't> sure, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's it. That's pretty much the first idea. Okay. No, I think that really works. Um, I've, I've pretty much done this three times. Okay. Um, so the next one okay. is, co- is called uh, Cluedo's 70th Anniversary. Okay. 70th Anniversary. 70th Anniversary. I looked it up, actually. Conveniently, the board game is 70 years old. Oh, I see. Um, okay. In 2019. So, yeah. This one is going to be a TV show. Um, and it's going to be set in a modern-day British care home. Okay. Starring all elderly actors. Ah, I see. <laughs> um, so it's going to be a comedy set around a mystery as to how Mr. Black was murdered during the afternoon showing of Countdown. Oh, I see. So it's going to be all old people who have killed another old person. Yes. Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> yes. So, so Miss Scarlet, Joanna Lumley. Nice, nice, yeah. Mrs. White, Pam Ferris. Yeah. Most well known as the Trunchbull from Matilda. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mrs. Peacock, Maggie Smith. Yep. Crazy bird lady. Like it, like Pretty it. Pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reverend Green, Jim Broadbent. Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of just got that one from Bridget Jones. Sure. Yeah. Where is? Does he play Reverend right now? What does he? No, he's the dad, isn't he? 
Uh, he dresses as a, rev- a vicar or something. That's when they go it, to yeah. the party. They go to Master- the Tarts and Vicar's party. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Yes. Yeah. Um, Professor Plum, Michael Caine. Nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Colonel Mustard, Peter Capaldi at full language. Peter Capaldi at full language. You know, uh, from his role in uh, The Thick of It. Oh, okay, right. Sure. When he's just, he's not holding back at all with uh, the language that he uses. Okay, sure. But he's not old. What? He's, he's old. He's... Oh, sorry. You, you know what? No, you know what? I'm, he's right. like approaching, he might be about 70 now. He's he's probably the younger of this cast. To okay, be fair. Yeah. No, I was, I, I got mixed up. I was, I thought you meant Peter Sarah Fanowitz. Oh, no. right. So, no, yeah, Peter Capaldi. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. On board. Sure. Cool. And then the man who thinks he, he's a butler. I don't know the situation right now, but Tim Curry. Okay, sure, yeah. Because uh, he, he, I know he's in a wheelchair now because he had a stroke, but yes. uh, he can just be in a wheelchair. He can just be in a wheelchair, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. That's fine. So you're thinking he's like, in, in the movie, he's got dementia and it's made him believe that he's still a butler or something? Yes. Okay. Exactly yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's cool. Uh, that could be fun. I like that. Murder weapons. That's super British, though, so I expect the weapons to be just cups of tea or something. Murder weapons. Knitting needles. Yeah. <laughs> um, a blanket. Yeah, could, yeah. could be used for smothering. Sure, yeah. Um, a dodgy Zimmer frame. Mm-hmm. Oh, like a one with the, they've cut the brakes. <laughs> yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> An oversized 80s mobile phone. Mm-hmm, yeah. Which everybody's granny's got one. Sure, yeah. Just like just ones. like in, in, in a drawer somewhere. Yeah, that, they yeah. never actually use. Yeah. No. A magnifying glass on a sunny day. Oh, okay. Or a window accidentally left open in winter. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the last. The last one is time. The last <laughs> yeah, one is that would have been good. Yeah, yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lose the magnifying glass. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe ungrateful children is one of them. Yeah. Those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is, uh, I think, my favourite, but uh, it's also the one I wrote first. Um, so it's going to be just your standard murder mystery, mm-hmm. um, but it's set in a British palace in the early 18th, 18th century. Oh, okay. Miss Scarlet is going to be Rachel Vice. Oh, we're going to do a, a, a favourite. Mrs. White is Emma Stone. Okay. Mrs. Peacock, Olivia Colman. Like it, like it. Reverend Green, Nicholas Holt. Mm-hmm. All of these people come with wigs. Oh, course. sure, of course. So they're, in char- they're in the, basically their characters from The Favourite. Pretty this much. It's a crossover sequel between Clue and The Favourite that no one saw coming. Yeah. <laughs> Love but it. no one realised that everybody wants. Yes, uh, yeah. Mm. Um, the favorite clue. I, I called it. Yeah, that, 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 that's better. The favorite clue. New characters involve uh, Colonel Mustard, Colin Firth. Yes. And Professor Plum as uh, Jermaine Clement. You might know him from Legion and Flight of the Concords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. Um, the Butler, David Tennant. Very. I'm spotting a theme of. Um, yeah, we've got two Doctor Who actors now. But yeah. Yes, I thought David Tennant would make a good butler. He can he, again. He can do high energy. He he can run. He can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he can indeed. Run. If you're wondering, by the way, Tim Curry's wheelchair is motorized. Sure, potentially yeah. quite quickly. Okay, sure. Yeah, he just yeah. Yeah, goes from zero to sixty. So yes, faster. <laughs> For this one, weapons include um, a fencing sword. Yeah. A hunting rifle. Mm-hmm. Poison. Ooh. <laughs> the Black Plague. The Black Death. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Childbirth. Mm-hmm. And a short life expectancy of forty one. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that a murderous duck wasn't involved. <laughs> oh man, I should have done that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's all I've got. Okay, no, but, they're all very good. I think they're all entirely plausible and workable. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with that. <laughs> yeah, very very good. Uh, cool. So Julio, I guess it's over to you. Um, all right. So mine, you'll see, it has like the setup and it has the ending, and then the second act is just. Much like this movie, I mean, it could be anything because it's just you know you set up comedians and you just let them play for you know an hour sure. or so. Uh-huh. So mine is a direct sequel to Clue. We're gonna go with the third ending, the one where Tim Curry was behind everything, and uh, except that I don't know. Do you guys think that he died at the end of uh, of the first Clue when uh, Mr. Green shot him? Oh. It seemed like he was dead. You yeah. could definitely bring him back. Though. I mean, that's what I did. I said, you know. We never really saw somebody pronounce him dead. No. Yeah, you can absolutely say he was faking it. Yeah, I mean, he was... Yeah, it was a very theatrical death. Yes. Good shot. Yeah. <laughs> very good shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so, so he didn't die. He, he actually good, survived good. Uh, being shot. He went to prison, but, you know, he kept going. His lawyer just appealed and appealed until finally he was released. There was a, a podcast that basically investigated the case, reopened the investigation, and exposed how badly they botched all the proceedings because, you know, that wasn't proper procedure the way that Mr. Green handled that investigation. A lot of people died, and there really wasn't, like, actual proof. There's no recordings of Tim Curry admitting to anything. So he gets released, basically, on a technicality. Uh, mm-hmm. But by now, he spent years in prison. So 
and he never really fully healed from the shot so he's he, he's not gonna go back to blackmailing that's too too much trouble his blackmailing days are over um instead you know because he's still a showman he's still tim curry um mm-hmm. he's gonna put those skills to good use in a new venture so he's gonna come up with he, his new business is just doing a murder mystery house because obviously he realized that he was good at that when he was uh oh, in yeah. the first clue yeah. So he opens this murder mystery house and it's, you know, it's doing good business. It's it's actually, he knows how to entertain the guests, how to plan the clues and everything. It's It gets popular. It, it has TV ads and it's an online everywhere. So it's what's worth entertainment, you know, and it's talking about expanding, maybe just opening new houses in other parts of the country. Um, now, all this, you know, it's the prelude to the movie. The movie actually starts on the night that, you know, he's having this very special group of guests coming in it says uh you know whoever's gonna be at the murder uh mystery house this weekend and so there's a knock on the door and he goes to open the door and when he opens it there's alicia silverstone and paul rudd and so oh, then, i'm beginning to spot what's gonna happen here but go on <laughs> <laughs> then we got th- then we get the the title card clue to clueless <laughs> so, uh, oh boy alicia silverson and paul rudd are playing their characters from clueless they're sharon mm-hmm. and, and josh um mm-hmm. but that's it i mean those, they're the only transplants from that movie okay by now they're they're happily married and they're joined in, in the game by other people in because tim curry is orchestrating all this you know he assigns them their identities as, as he did in the original movie so alicia silverson is miss white paul rudd is mr green then Colonel Mustard is going to be John Cho. Mm-hmm. Uh, Professor Plum is Keegan Michael Key. Um, mm-hmm. Miss Scarlet is Rachel Bloom, which I don't know if Ooh, Harry nice. knows her, but I, yeah, you, I know no, John. I yeah, knows. she's in a TV show called uh, Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Yeah, she's okay. She's really funny. I think she could, she can definitely vamp it up. Um, yeah. And then finally, uh, Miss Peacock, Melissa McCarthy. So you have this group I like of comedians, it. Yeah. you know, stuck in. I would make house. one. I'll make one suggestion. If you're going to use Rachel Bloom, you should make a great Miss Scarlet. But she could also play the Yvette character because, I mean, she literally has a song called Heavy Boobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in, in this version, I don't have an Yvette. We only have the, the enough, six, yeah. the six ga- uh, original characters and, uh, and What's Worth. Um, sure. <laughs> so, so Tim Curry explains What's Worth, explains how the game's going to go. You know, it's, it's what you expect. Only this is, this is a big murder mystery so usually you know they just take an evening but this is gonna take the entire weekend so what happens is they spend the first night just getting to know each other and then sometime during the night there's gonna be a murder and then when they wake up the investigation starts um Mm -hmm. you know and it's it's a big house and it's but he takes their cell phones and he basically locks them they're still locked into this giant state um Mm -hmm. but now the next morning nobody gets a wake-up call they kind of wake up on their own and they're trying to figure out what's going on uh until they finally go into Tim Curry's room and they find that he's dead there. His head's been like smashed to bits. Oh and, my God. I know. But of course, you know, they're kind of clueless, all of them. So they just think <laughs> much like a ga- uh, the movie Game Night. You know, they think that's part of the game. So they're like, uh-huh. oh, okay, the game is on. Somebody murdered Tim Curry. Let's start investigating. And, uh, and Alicia Silverstone, you know, the shared character, she is, she's a natural leader like we saw in Clueless. So she instantly becomes kind of like the lead detective and she just takes charge and starts trying to figure <laughs> I would, out yes i would love a murder mystery thriller with share from clueless as the lead investigator that, that is <laughs> right. a very entertaining concept yeah. <laughs> so i mean like i said this would be the second act of the movie which is mm-hmm. you know what happens uh, I, you know it's just gonna be a, a lot of misunderstandings and people assuming that oh it's fake when it's a real murder um but then eventually, you know, halfway through the movie, they realize that, oh, no, he is actually dead. You know, the corpse mm-hmm. are smelling and it's, it becomes clear <laughs> that this is, this is bad. So it, 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 and then they realize they're trapped because they don't know where he put his phones. Uh, they, they can't get out of the house. And now they know that there's a killer among them. So, well, there's, there's nothing to it. They just have to keep investigating. Uh, Alicia Silverson is like, well, it doesn't matter. We were doing it before. We have to keep doing it. I'm, I'm going to find out who the, the murderer is. So second half of the movie is the real investigation, and then we get to the truth, right? And the truth is going to be that one of the guests, one of the people in the group, is the offspring of one of the original Clue guests, because basically Tim Curry ruined their lives. Oh. And so when, they, when, when his business, when What's Worth Entertainment became popular, 
they they saw it and they just came looking for revenge. So now, up in the ante, up in the gimmick from the original movie, we get six different endings. The oh, and each one it's the, it's the child of another one of the characters. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, okay. Ex- except that Alicia Silverstone's ending, the one that we see last, is not like that because you know there is one of the six guests in the original movie didn't really get their lives uh, ruined. I mean, Mr. Green actually. Yeah. He just shot Tim Curry. He he's fine. So in the ending where Cher was the one that killed him, it's just that she had read the news and she was well versed in the case and she was just driven by a strong desire to just be part of vigilante justice and that's why she went to the to the murder mystery house to to kill him. And then after you've shown those six endings, then you get the title card that's like, well, this is really what happened. And the <laughs> real, real ending is that Tim Curry killed himself because oh. even when he was being a successful businessman, he couldn't really regain the high that he had in his youth when he was a master manipulator and blackmailer. So he, he just decided that he was going to end it. But because he's such a scheming piece of shit, he, he wasn't just going to kill himself. Instead, he was just going to play mind games with a bunch of people one last time. So mm-hmm. they, they figure that out and, you know, everybody is just relieved that there's not an actual murder among them, but they're also pretty traumatized by the whole experience, except Alicia Silverstone, because she just had the time of her life. She, she <laughs> basically, she just found her purpose in life. She wants to be a detective and, it, you know, she figures Paul Red's like the best sidekick ever. So he can be the, the Watson to her Sherlock, so to speak. And so a new franchise is born. And from now on, we can have like three, four, five, uh, clueless movies that have to do with <laughs> Alicia Silverstone solving mysteries, just like you wanted, John. I would so watch that Netflix series. Yeah, that, is a, <laughs> that is a great setup. I really like it. Is Tim Curry's suicide going to be revealed through like a, a note or something? Are we going to get like a hit so he can come back and like read it or something? I figure we'll have a flashback. I, I, it, maybe yeah. you, uh, you find a, a recording. You know, cause oh, we, a video message. That's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hidden under a floorboard or something. When they, that's the final clue, and then we, he, he reveals his evil scheme. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I like it. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I'm always here for anything that incorporates characters from Clueless. It's a <laughs> fabulous film that we haven't done yet. We should do Clueless. Have you seen Clueless? No. Oh wow. So that must have meant very little to you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Do you know? It's a great uh, film. Alicia we'll do I mean, you know Paul nope. Rudd, but do you know Alicia Silverstone? You do. Alicia Silverstone was Batgirl in the Batman and Robin movie. Uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, well, I, as a big fan of Clueless, I like that a lot. Very, very good. Cool. So I guess that leaves That me. leaves you, yeah. Yeah. Now, awkwardly enough, your worst idea is basically what my sole idea was. Wasn't it? Well, that's, that's <laughs> unfortunate <laughs> so, for you. Looking for you at first. It does go into, <laughs> yeah, I've gone into a little bit more detail there and taken it in a slightly different direction. But, okay. So, but yeah. It's, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's better than my worst idea. Yeah, well, so you be the judge, I don't know. Okay. So basically this is inspired by the fact that inevitably there is currently a remake of Clue in production. Mm-hmm. Apparently Ryan Reynolds is attached to Star. It's okay. not clear which role he's going to play, but he's going to okay. be one of the stars. It sounds like it's going to be terrible. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of Ryan Reynolds' movies, really, to be honest. No. Uh, so, he's just so blunt. Yeah, I, I'm not the biggest fan, but he's not very charismatic. So that's happening. Also, in 2008... So it's just movie news now. Yeah, my, my sequel is just <laughs> trivia. No, no. Um, I'm just set, I'm setting up. I'm, laying, I'm setting a scene. Okay, okay. So but also, in 2008, Hasbro, the game company, uh, released an updated version of Cluedo mm-hmm. called Cluedo Discover the Secrets. Okay. It was supposed to be like a modern 21st century take on the classic board game. Yeah. And it was uh, very poorly received, had horrible reviews, and was very swiftly withdrawn from sale. Yeah, I was going to say, because like, the original Cluedo game... It doesn't feel dated. Hmm. It's just like different rooms in a mansion, and then out of the night, it's all fine. Like we still use spanners and rope today. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not set. In I mean, I, I don't have a billiard room, but no, who does? But yeah, <laughs> you know, whatever. whatever. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, that's the point. It's like it's not set in any one specific space and time. It's just yeah, archetypes. But this version, I've never played it, but from reading the description, it just they really tried to like Y two K it up and make it hip and down with the kids, mm-hmm. and it. It did bombed. It was yeah. ha- it was really hated and <laughs> swiftly withdrawn. Wow. Yeah. So I thought I'd combine those two ideas a little bit mm-hmm. into a sequel that's going to be kind of a movie within a movie. Mm-hmm. So much like yours, your worst idea. It's about <laughs> no, you said it, not me. Like, I like it. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's going to be set in the year two thousand nineteen, mm-hmm. the present day, uh, and the remake of Clue is ready to go into production. Great. The film with uh, Ryan Reynolds. 
So now I'm going to run through the cast now, and the cast are playing. It's just a prediction now. <laughs> no, no, it's it, well, it's. No, it's not a prediction. It's it's my version. Maybe okay. this happened. Anyway, maybe something maybe someone will listen to this and yeah, sure. <laughs> I hope not for their sakes. But... <laughs> so these are the char- these are the actors who I've cast in this. Mm-hmm. And also the descriptions I'm giving are the actual descriptions. I've not written these. Mm. These are the actual descriptions of the updated characters from the 2008 reboot of the Clue board game. Because mm-hmm. I feel like the when they reboot classic movies, they often try to update the characters in similarly cringe every ways. Yeah. So I feel like it would work for both. So Ryan Reynolds has been cast as Jacob Green. Okay. Who is... Who, who a, is this? Oh, can we, are, you, are you set on that, or can we do alliteration? This is what he was called in the 2008 board game. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, cool. So if you want something else... No, no. Yeah, my concept is to make fun of this flop board game. Jacob Green is a well-connected Hollywood agent who's becoming disillusioned with a shallow line of work. Mm-hmm. It's a classic Hollywood archetype right there. Yeah. So I've then have cast Anne Hathaway. Oh, solid choice. As Scarlet. Cassandra Scarlet. Yes. An A-list actress who slept her way to the top and fears her secrets are going to be exposed. Mm, yeah. Okay, yeah. Ving Rhames. Oh, um... Oh, Colonel Mustard. Yeah. Yeah. Ving Rhames is Jack Mustard. Jack Mustard. <laughs> As again, I did not write these. This is actually a character. Oh, really? God, bloody yeah. hell. Jack Mustard, an out-of-shape former professional football player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That works. Yeah. Uh, Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman, uh, she's going to... Be... Miss White, yeah. yeah, I think I missed yeah. White. Uh, Diane White, a delusional former child star desperate for a comeback. Okay. They really Hollywooded this game up. It was like, they have, yeah. No wonder it didn't work. James Franco. Mm. Professor Plum. Professor Plum. Professor Plum, yes. Yeah. Uh, Victor Plum. A bil- <laughs> <laughs> this might be my favourite terrible 2008 update mm. storyline. Victor Plum is a billionaire video game designer who went from nerd to stud. <laughs> to stud. <laughs> nerd to stud. So bad. <laughs> Somebody wrote that. And it wasn't me. Oh, uh, and finally... Uh, How this many is where times you... you said you haven't written this? I know, yeah. <laughs> I've written other elements of this, but the initial... Yeah, yeah, line. yeah. And finally, awkwardly enough, uh, as Miss Peacock, or Eleanor Peacock, mm. I also cast... Tilda Swinson. Oh, really? oh, great. I mean, I think that, she's that, that, that explains your reaction earlier. Then. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, your, your, your reaction was like, oh, well, I does John not like this? Like, yeah. this is this is entirely John. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just in my head like, oh shit, do I have to like come up with something new? Can I, can I still do this? Yeah. yeah. So Tilda Swinson as Eleanor Peacock, mm-hmm. a wealthy member of an influential political family who's obsessed with good manners. Mm. So sure, I guess that's not too different from the original. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, in this film, in my sequel, these actors are all playing themselves, playing those roles. So okay. it's, it's a, like a film within a film kind of set up. There's going to be sort of a cast members, but they're they're actually going to be playing actual characters mm. in this film within a film, not themselves. If that makes sense. Yeah. So obviously, we need someone to play the butler. Yeah. And much like in your version, again, instead of a butler, I've got the director of this film. Okay. Because yeah. essentially, Tim Curry in this film was he, directing the yes, action. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I was thinking, like, who can replace Tim Curry? Like, cause it's, this is why I don't think a remake will ever work, because who could possibly be as much fun as, as Tim Curry was in the original? And I did come up with one name that I think I could live with, and mm-hmm. so I've this person. So I think in the Tim Curry role of the butler slash director... God, you're have, building this up so much. I know, it's not worth it. I have <laughs> cast Richard E. Grant. Yeah, okay, that's ah. that's solid. Yeah. yeah. That is, that, that is a solid choice. British, yeah. 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 He could do that very well. So he's playing the director of this movie, of mm-hmm. remake of Clue. Mm-hmm. Before filming starts, he instructs the cast to participate in a murder mystery weekend mm-hmm. to help the cast to bond and kind of get into character. So the cast aren't particularly thrilled with this, but they go along with it. And of course, he's going to force them to refer to themselves only as their character names, much like in Clue. Yes. So they're not like, even though it is Ryan Reynolds and Anne Hathaway and Tilda Swinton, mm-hmm. they have to call each other, you know, Mr. Crumb, Mr. Mr. Crumb, Mr. Plum, Mr. Miss Peacock. God, this is similar to my idea. It really is. It's embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, they arrive at the... But what matters is, I got there first. Yeah, exactly. Good for you. Um, so they arrive at the Murder Mystery Mansion. Mm-hmm. It's an abandoned mansion in the middle of the nowhere, much like in the original. Uh, they're greeted by the director, Richard D. Grant, and mm-hmm. his long-suffering assistant, Beth, who's going to be our uh, Yvette character. Yeah. Well, who, who's playing that? I Well, I was... I, was struck... I actually... I actually googled earlier today while trying to think of someone i actually googled big boobed actresses oh which, john which did, which really messed with the al- i'm sure it really messed with whatever yeah. algorithm is watching yes. my google like, also just, google must have no idea what you are anymore yeah it's like, it's like this does not compute also 
Don't Google that. No. It's, um, Why would you Google that? <laughs> especially if you Google image search it, because it's just a lot of weird oh, um, doctored John. images of yes, regular of actors with like their boobs just blown out of proportion, so they look like freaks of nature. Yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I can't, the, the, the only person I could come up with was uh, Christina Hendricks from Mad, from Mad Men. Do you, uh, that's the no, I, I don't know. She was in Drive, I think. Well. She's been in some films. Um, you must have. Yeah, Mad Men is probably her biggest thing. Mad Men, what she's famous for, but she's fa- she's famous for having a very like hourglass figure, and mm-hmm. she's she's quite well endowed. Okay, cool. um, well, it's Christina. <laughs> for those who do know Christina Hendricks, you know, curvaceous Mad Men star Christina Hendricks plays Beth, who in this version is not a French maid, but is Richard E. Grant's assistant, like PA. Mm-hmm. Although at a certain point, the director asks her to play the role of the French maid for this murder mystery weekend, yes. and hands her the costume, and she takes one look at it and says, "I am not wearing that." <laughs> okay. No way. It's 2018. I'm not wearing that. <laughs> uh, anyway. By so... the way, is there a singing telegram in this sequel pitch? Of course. Yeah. Well, okay. Great. Because because I've casted it already. Yeah. Good because I haven't. I said of great. course because I actually haven't got that far. <laughs> Uh, so she's there. Oh, there's also going to be a cook, obviously, who I thought could be played by Julie Walters, because she always she always plays cooks or maids in these days. So yep, she, she'll that, just be doing classic. That works. Yeah, you know, she'll turn up, she'll grumble for a scene, she'll get murdered. Yeah. That's the end of Julie Walters. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> anyway, they all sit down to dinner, and they all realise that if they're going to have a murder mystery weekend, somebody has to play the body. So the director announces that the role of Mr. Body will be played by the seventh and final guest. Mm-hmm. The doorbell rings, in walks, Sean Bean. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, okay. <laughs> Who else could play Mr. Body yep. but Sean Bean? Like, yep. <laughs> so they're all together and the director kind of doles out the murder weapons and instructs them to do some kind of role playing in character. Mm-hmm. Uh, the levels of commitment are going to be extremely varied. Tilda Swinton is, of course, deep in character uh, to the point where it's really pissing everyone else off because she just won't break character <laughs> at all. Just, you know. yeah. uh, Natalie Portman is hamming it up to the max, mm-hmm. doing some very questionable accent work. And uh, for some reason, doing a full Judy Garland impersonation. Just okay. Because you know, she likes to do... I feel like Natalie Portman always does a lot. So yeah. I like that. If she's playing herself, playing a washed up child star in this movie, mm-hmm. I can imagine her doing like, a, oh, I'll just be Judy Garland. And I'll mm-hmm. do the accents and I'll be like very over the top. It's just any excuse for Natalie Portman to just choose some scenery, which she does in a lot of her films. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and James Franco obviously don't give a fuck and just want to get high. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Anne Hathaway is going to be bored and high maintenance and, de- and demanding. Kind of like what she played in Ocean's Eight. Yes. Yeah, like she she's she, she seems to be in a point of her career now where she's kind of making fun of herself, which I think is good, and she can, maybe she can continue on that path for this. Yeah. And of course, Ving Rhames is just tired and grumpy and hungry. Oh, how have we not cast her on the bottom Carter in anything yet? True. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the time's passed. But no, like... she could do a Mrs. Peacock. Yeah, yeah, she'd, she'd be re- a great she, Mrs. Peacock. She really would. Yeah. Anyway, moving sure, on. Yeah. I went with Tilda Swinton. Yeah. Anyway, on the director's insistence, they ad lib a scene in which Sean Bean threatens them all with uh, something or other, blackmail, I don't know, mm-hmm. as Mr. Body. Uh, the lights go out, crash, boom, bang, he dies. Mm-hmm. Except they quickly realise he's not acting. And somebody gets to say, <laughs> somebody's killed Sean Bean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And maybe they'll be like, well, sh- not a shocker. <laughs> and then they suddenly realise that this murder mystery has become horribly real. Mm-hmm. And like, how, the- how dead is he? Like, is he just a body on the ground? Is his head separated, you know, smashed to bits, as was in Julio's? I think he's just dead. He, he's, he's just lying on the ground. Yeah, because this is a lot... After this, I'm wrapping up now, it's going to be a lot of, like, <laughs> you know, pretty similar stuff from the original film. So maybe, maybe they think he's dead, then he actually does die, and, mm-hmm. you know, there's some kind of confusion. But yeah. the oh, so thing to, is he's dead. You get to kill Sean Bean more than once, basically. I think that's... Yeah, he, maybe should, he should die, like, seven or eight times over the course of the movie. <laughs> great, yeah. great. In, di- in increasingly ridiculous ways. Yeah. Like, surely he's really dead now. Right? Maybe once with each weapon. Yes. Oh, that's good. I like that, mm. yeah. Cool. At some point, everyone kills Sean Bean. Yeah. yeah. Well, but again, uh, in ways that you wouldn't really expect. Like, say, for some reason, the noose lands around his neck. He mm-hmm. doesn't end up hanging from it. He actually trips over it. Yeah, that works. Stuff like that. So anyway, that makes sense, because as the movie goes on, much like the original, it turns out that everybody had a motive to want to kill Sean Bean. Uh, by the way, sorry, just before I forget, I, I was just thinking of other ridiculous ways that Sean Bean could die. I was thinking yeah. lead piping lands in his mouth, he gets lead poisoning or something. Yeah. When we used to play Cluedo, mm-hmm. we actually didn't touch the lead piping. We had to get a little tissue to touch it. What, this Your family's this? Yeah. Why? Because it was made of lead. You got that poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> it's a documentary to be made about your childhood. It really is. Like... I've only just realised now that it's a bit odd. <laughs> Was it like now. serious or was it part of like the? I I I don't I don't know if it was a real piece of lead. I have no idea. And even then, 
I'm not going to get it from TouchNet. No. So who, who insert, was this your parents insisting on that? I, I don't remember. <laughs> it's from such a young age that I yeah, just don't remember. That is, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> God damn it. God, your childhood, man. Anyway, so it sounds like all of these actors, the actual actors, had a reason for wanting to murder Sean Bean. Mm-hmm. So Ryan Reynolds wants him dead because Sean Bean was the one who told him it was a good idea to make the Green Lantern movie. <laughs> yeah. Anne Hathaway slept with him to get a role in Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. but then he betrayed her and gave it to Liv Tyler. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going to say then he betrayed her and took it for himself. Took it for himself, yeah, sure, that could work too. <laughs> Vin Grames, it turns out, has a sideline producing terrible low-budget action movies in Eastern Europe and embezzling the money from wealthy financial backers. Turns out Sean Bean was in one of those movies, which, I mean, I'm not accusing him of doing this, but he was, him and Sean Bean were both in a Ukrainian-funded action film called um, Last... Da- no, I forget what it's called now. Let me Google, actually, because I had it before. It, sa- it's, it sounded dodgy and tax rice offy. <laughs> Tax I like that you feel the need to explain that you're not accusing Ving Rhames of this, but, but you know, I don't know how this disclaimer about yeah. Sean Bean. Yeah. <laughs> Sean yeah. Bean might have offered a role in Lord of the Rings to Anne Hathaway. Oh yeah, that definitely happened, because he, def- he definitely had <laughs> casting control on that. Yeah. Movie, yeah. <laughs> Soldiers of Fortune. So in 2012, Ving Rhames and Sean Bean starred together in a Ukrainian-produced movie called Soldiers of Fortune, mm-hmm. which uh, was released in all of three cinemas and grossed like $50,000, <laughs> apparently. So I reckon that was a big old tax write-off. Ving Rhames is skimming all the money off all the backers of the movie. Like, you know, taking $50 million to shoot it, spending 500000 to actually shoot it, mm-hmm. and taking the rest for himself. So he did that, allegedly. Mm-hmm. And um, Sean Bean starred in that movie, found out about it, and threatened to expose him. Right. That's his that's his motivation. Mm-hmm. Natalie Portman was has resented him for years after he made fun of a fake British accent in V for Vendetta. Mm-hmm. Tilda Swinton could have killed him as a character choice because she's so deep into character that, you know, <laughs> just part of her method. <laughs> sure. And James Franco just thought it'd be ironic. Y- y- yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He lives for the irony. So, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's going to follow up the plot of Close. So there'll be more characters going to come in and, you know, we'll, we'll have the singing telegram girl. Who do, yes. who do you want to play her? Alison Brie. Alison Brie. Great. Yeah. Love it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. She's annoying. I imagine that she can sing and dance for all of one line. Oh, yeah. That works perfectly, yeah. Uh, what about the other... So, we could probably have a cop turn up as well. The cop and the motorist are the other two, aren't they? The cop, I feel, needs to be, um, again, a black cop with a moustache one day away from retirement. Sure, yeah. Um, if, if we could. Morgan Freeman? <laughs> I mean, he's like sure. 20 years past retirement. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that can be the joke. Just sure, like, yeah. I'm one day away from retirement, and everybody just looks at him, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. huh? <laughs> would you, like, would, would, would yeah. you like a walking stick? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the motorist? Uh, Maybe that's when you get uh, Helena Bonham Carter. Yeah. Could be female motorist, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of all I've got. So I guess it just follows the original plot of Clue. And maybe, again, we'll have like different endings where each of them reveals their motivation for wanting to kill him. Mm-hmm. But I think the real ending is, of course, that Richard E. Grant killed him. Yes. Because elf reasons which I've not thought up so what, what could Richard E. Grant's motivation for killing Sean Bean be as this director character oh that's right that's not Richard E. Grant that's a director right? it's the director it could be Richard E. Grant he could unmask himself as actual Richard E. Grant I don't know like, make sorry I, when you said unmask I just imagined him like taking a mask off and it's the same, it's the same thing underneath face, yeah. it is I Richard E. Grant <laughs> flamboyant actor Richard E. Grant <laughs> but, all, but all the people in the film they all see him as like a new person yeah 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 that'd be funny um Oh, I don't know. It kills him for tax purposes. I don't know. No, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I should have written this. Gonna, I should have written that you should have written this bit, yeah. I really should have written I ran out of time. I ran out of time. Um, Maybe he's tired. He's tired of Sean Bean dying in movies. And yeah. He's like, okay, we're going to put an end to this. We're going to kill him for real, and that way we don't have to deal with it anymore. Yeah, that works. Or maybe he thinks that Sean Bean is a bad actor, mm-hmm. and so the only way he can get a good performance out of him is to kill him for real. Okay, yeah. He makes, he, he plays a better corpse than he does an out of man. Yeah. Thing, yeah. <laughs> no, that could work. Yeah. His I mean, best parts in movies are always post-death. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, none of the explanations in the original movie make any sense, so mm. I don't think it matters if this kind of just fizzles out and ends on a random freeze frame. Mm, yeah. Yeah, then Richard E. Grant goes, I'm going to go home and sleep with my husband. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, movie ends. But yeah, that was pretty much it. So that was a clue to discover the secrets, which is the terrible name of the board game. So, wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that one started strong and fizzled, but never mind. Like yeah. Sometimes. Well, no, no, it, it was good. It was. It definitely was better than uh, what what I did. Thank you. I, I liked it. I think that uh, I, I know you were stuck with the with the setup from the rebooted game, but really, if you were trying to make it hip in in of the times, <laughs> you really needed like a. An influencer character, somebody, you know. You're right, yeah. 
like a YouTube yeah, if it was made to... or something. To- Actually, yes, that's very true. It, it did need some kind of live streaming element. So, yeah. Yeah. Did you guys want to do the, the Friends thing? The it- Friends, oh, the friends game. The friends game. Yes. I, I, it didn't occur to me that this is a perfect movie for the Friends game. Yes. Okay, so I'm looking at the characters right now. So we're doing, we're doing the six guests, and I'm guessing plus uh, What's Worth and Yvette. That would make sense, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I want to say, if we start with What's Worth, uh, I'm guessing Ross, right? Ross is the butler. I feel like the six cast should be the six, the six guests? friends, and yeah, it should be another. It should be some kind of supporting character as Wadsworth. I don't know who though. Okay, so supporting characters we got we got Janice. We can have Janice as the butler. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. It's a lot of dialogue I'm not to get sure. yeah, Janice. Yeah. Like, um, I feel like less is more with that accent. Like, okay. Yeah, uh, Gunther is not particularly interesting. We've also got Gunther would to- be a good Wadsworth though, because he's kind of the, the seventh friend in many ways. And is it well, Paul Rudd's also. Kind yeah, Paul Rudd would friend. work too. Yeah, I don't. I feel like Gunther's more of a classic Friends character. Y- yes, yes, he is. Um, Do you think that Gunther could get through all that exposition though? I mean, that's I well, that'd be fun because he gets like he averages like half a lot, one line an episode of that. So mm. to give him like the most dialogue <laughs> would be finally as moments come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so if Ross is not what's worth, uh, that means that Ross is either the pervy Professor Plum, or mm. uh, the oh, I guess he has to be Mister Green. Right, kind of uptight and clumsy. Oh, actually, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that works. Yeah. Okay, I think the Colonel Mustard. I think he's Joey. You think? Am I, am I wrong? I don't know. I feel like he might be more of a Chandler. He's kind of quite shouty and. Well, also because neurotic. Professor Plum, he's the one that's always staring at boobs and feeling people. Yeah, out, Professor so. Plum is oh, yeah. more of a womanizer, which isn't really Chandler's personality type. So. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Although. If Chandler was Mr. Green, because everyone thinks Chandler's gay in the early seasons. Right? <laughs> Not just the early seasons. Well, throughout. Yeah, yeah, throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Ross is Colonel Mustard, because he shouts a lot. Colonel Mustard shouts a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that works. So yeah, maybe Chandler is Mr. Green, Ross is Colonel Mustard, and Joey is Professor Plum. I know that makes Joey an academic as well. <laughs> <laughs> Joey now has a doctor. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you have uh, now the three women. Uh, mm-hmm. so yeah. We have, we'll start with uh, Scarlet. Mm-hmm. So that would have to be. That's got to be Rachel. To vamp it up the best. Uh, would that be Phoebe? No, no, because Phoebe's got to be Miss Peacock, crazy bird lady. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, could, know, I, see, I could see Monica as a crazy bird lady. I could lady. see Monica too because she's the most trill. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And that would leave uh, Rachel as uh, Miss White, hmm. right? Yeah. I don't know who's more likely to have killed or, well, be a widower. To have killed her husband, Phoebe. Phoebe's definitely the yeah. one most likely to have killed people. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she may have even done so. Yeah. So does that leave Rachel as Rachel could be Miss Scarlet? Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. So Rachel's Miss Scarlet, Monica's Phoebe the... is Miss White, and Monica's Mrs. Peacock. There mm-hmm. you go. I, I, I think that works. Yeah. Okay, so who's Yvette? Ooh, um... Ursula. <laughs> She'll end up with Phoebe. <laughs> 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 Well, Phoebe does put is on that, is it that, Or it could be Janice. It could be Janice, yeah. Could be uh, Denise Richards. I know she's only in one episode. I don't know who that is. The model who, is she Monica and Ross's cousin, who's really sexy, and they both, and oh, both yeah. Ross and Phoebe get mm-hmm. inappropriately attracted to her. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking purely of boobs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> phrases, people, not, yeah. yeah. My mum would be so proud right now. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, if it's going to be a character who is in more than like one episode, mm. then I guess it's probably Janice. Yeah, I guess it's going to yeah, be Janice. And she's, yeah, I, I think I'd like to see the actress who plays Janice doing a ridiculous French accent. Mm. Uh, the cook. The cook, the cook. Oh, uh... See, the cook would be Gunther if we were not The cook would Gunther. be a good Gunther, yeah. Mm. Gets one line, gets killed. Oh, uh, or the cook could be the super of, the, of their building. Oh, Mr. Heckles. Yeah. No, it's not Mr. No, Heckles. Not, no, no, no. Mr. Heckles is that upstairs neighbour. That's Oh, no, I know who you mean. neighbour. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, the heavier set guy. Yeah, he could work, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Or mate. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. Um, oh, I... Do we not have the singing telegram girl? Oh, yes, singing telegram girl. Um, Ben. But the little kid. I, mean, I know he's probably like twenty-five now, but still. Yeah, I'm going Ben. How about? Hey, it, John. Everybody dies in this. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. How about it's uh, Carol and Susan? Oh yeah, like a singing lesbian duo. Just okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. Amazing. So Lovely. killing children not okay, but yeah. killing lesbians. Yes. Fine by you. Totally. Yeah. I'd no. say hell I'm willing to die on. Yeah. Great. We are your singing lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> Love it.
<laughs> so yeah, I think that's a very good friends game. Yes. Great. Well, now that that's done, we need to do list of submissions, I guess. Mm-hmm. <sighs> right. Um, so I've got Marcus Kane here. He says. A singing telegram origin story. Massive build up with all the drama of a cinematic blockbuster and then bang. That's it. That's it. Oh, I like it. I like it. Good. <laughs> that was somewhat alarming. Good delivery, good delivery Harry. Mike. Thank you. Uh, Sam Weigel, I believe his name is. W E I G E L. Sure, yeah. Weigel, Weigel, um, yeah. yeah. The sequel should totally be a true crime documentary. Honestly, I think it would be hilarious to take all the comedy out and make it a super overly serious dissection of the whole event. In quotes. All these idiots were involved in a murder, but we finally got to the bottom of it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like they're all doing like talking heads and stuff and Jurassic reenactments. That's cool. I like mm-hmm. it. Phil Better says uh, a sequel. The criminal returned to the original mansion after 25 years of prison. They sit and talk and play a game of Clue, or Cluedo as we <laughs> call Cluedo, it, yeah. uh, that they all think is fairly funny. But as each one guesses who done it, they start to mysteriously die the way they guess it. Okay. Finally, down to Colonel Mustard and Miss Scarlet. Are the only two left. They each pull a revolver on each other. Sounds bleak. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a horror movie. I guess, yeah. Um, from Out of the Shadows, uh, someone is clapping. They slowly walk forward to reveal it's Uncle Pennybags. Oh, my God. <laughs> from Monopoly. <laughs> from Monopoly, yes. Right, yeah. Who orchestrated the whole thing to get rid of his competition. Confused, we pull back to reveal they are, they are really in a board game shop. Ah, oh, it's like, so it's like Toy Story kind of thing? Like anthropomorph- anthropomorphized? I'm really board. not sure. That was... Complicated. So all of the characters, so the six characters come back and kill each other mm. while playing Cluedo, mm-hmm. and then it turns out Mr. Moneybags from Monopoly was the reason for it all. Yeah. But then okay. you pull back a... and you're at a toy store. Yeah. Okay, well, it's a, it's something, yeah. It's a Thank Shyamalan you, twist at the end. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's something, definitely. <laughs> um, and then Dante Pinnell from the uh, Let's Get Contextual podcast, which I, I must say, by the way, um, I guessed it on Let's, Let's Get Contextual recently. Okay. That will be out already. Um, I did Tron and Tron Legacy. We talked okay. about that for a bit. And um, I pitched a sequel to it. Oh, okay. I pitched Tron Destiny. Very nice. Okay. And it was very good. I also did the uh, Two Geeks, Two Movies, What is the Plot of This Movie? So, and it wow, worked that's very well. Good branding. It's a very good episode, actually. I was on top form. You should go and check it out. Wow, you are so humble. Great. Let's get contextual. Let's get contextual. Cool. That's, check that's, it out. That, that's yeah. the podcast. So, uh, Dante's idea is a sequel again. We start with Mr. Green. He's sitting in his FBI office when suddenly... He's in a different place, and he sees two other Mr. Greens standing in front of him. They explain that they are from alternate timelines, each from a different ending to the original two. <laughs> nice. I like it. I'm, I'm glad that somebody went there. This is good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they explain an, that a new thread has loomed his top-hatted head. A multi-billionaire code named Uncle Pennybags. Oh, Fucking God. hell. <laughs> I'm spotting a theme here. Um, has, has invented trans-dimensional travel, and the Mr. Greens must get the other cast members from the original clue back together so they can stop Uncle Pennybags in all of their dimensions. The rest of the film is a high-stakes thriller where ultimately they're able to take down all the Uncle Pennybagses for good. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Now, I don't know if him and Phil Better have sort of collaborated on their ideas at mm-hmm. all, because they both start with literally the word sequel and then a colon, yeah. and then they just get into it. They've both liked each other's comment. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's some kind of circle jerk situation happening yeah. here. Yeah. And also, if I remember, both of them, back when we did Battleship, did pitch... Well, Dante particularly picked it a whole connected universe yeah. where Moneybags was something... Yeah, he really wants that to happen, I think. Yeah. Pennybags, whatever Penny, it is, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, there's, there's something some, fishy some, going on something's here. Something's happening there, yeah, we need to... I need to uh, dig Is deeper that into that. really want to unravel? I'm not sure. Yeah. So yeah. Not called, well, I was going to say into the Clueverse, but really it in, should be into the... What's it? The name Hasbroverse? Of the yes. Yeah. Into the yeah. Hasbroverse, yeah. Um, okay, I've got a few others. Okay, sure. Um, they're all quite short. Though. I've got a few review, reviews as well here. Yeah. Okay. If you want to read them corporate out. reviews oh, here. Edit them out with the boring, yeah. Debashish Mahapatra. I'm sure that's perfect. I think I did you. really well there. Good for you. Good um, for you. says, I loved it. It's corny as hell, but everyone is too damn entertaining. Yeah. Great. Um, so Austin Cummings says, uh, let's get the game Guess Who in there, maybe as a sequel, but also continuing from each various ending. Hmm. Well, that's good. I yeah. feel like you've already done that with, was it Battleship when you did the Guess Who? Did I? It was no, Battleship. I, I don't remember. It was Battleship, yeah. Uh, Liz Lefevre, I think, says, my hands down favourite movie, could watch it every day. Wow. 
I'm not saying they do watch it every day. They're just saying they could. They could. They're not actually doing it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I believe you, Liz. Okay. Tommy O'Hara says, absolutely atrocious movie. Alex Morris says, absolutely amazing movie. Wow. So <laughs> Binary opinions there. Yeah. Brian Wilson says, was it, though? <laughs> so, yeah, this is all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and that is it. That's it. Okay. Very good. So, uh, thank you. Sounds like this, one, this is one that people had a lot of opinions on. Yeah. Um, which, yeah. I wonder how you can find this a bad movie. No, I agree. I think because it's pretty hard to dislike this. It's exactly what it's trying to be. Yeah, it did get. And it, it's not. It's not like it's trying to look like a bad movie. No, no, sure, not so. It's got quite weak reviews when it came out, actually. But it is now obviously a massive cult favorite. So. Yeah, I don't know. People well, just. Do you think that maybe not being familiar with the game would really affect it? You know, if you go in thinking that you're actually going to watch mm-hmm. a, a proper murder mystery, and then yeah. it throws you. Oh yeah, curve. definitely yeah. Okay, I have some listener submissions as well. Mm-hmm. David Wurzel said, 13 Dead End Drive, which is another game that was kind of a knockoff of Cluedo. So, okay. Yeah. Walt Williams, similar to you, Hulu, said, Clueless. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott Rawlings went very conceptual, said, Clue 2, Hyper Clue. Everything resets to the beginning of the movie, but they still have their memories from the first movie, but they find they can't escape now because the mansion is an N-dimensional object where the outside and the inside are on the same plane. Ooh. So I guess a hyperclue is a thing. I don't know. I, I I don't know. It sounds like science jargon, but I like it. Yeah, <laughs> since you're kind of jargon. <laughs> the best kind of jargon, science <laughs> jargon. And Chris Gobert said, not a clue. Yeah. Uh, Andrew J. Hawthorne said, too loo. Too, L-U-E. Mm. Yeah, I was trying to work something like that doesn't in, but really it, it's a scan, does it? No. no. Yeah. Uh, well, Rem Mary tried out too clue, too curious. Ah, yeah. Too that, clue, too curious is good. That's, yeah. That is good. Yeah. I like that. That's a nice twist, yeah. Mm. Uh, Matthew Hedge said, Clue to Mission to Moscow. This time, communism was not a red herring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Good. That's good. <laughs> Mike Carey said, The Clue Crew Crew, starring Tom Cruise and Terry Crews. <laughs> uh, Ira Ray said, The exact same movie, except Tim Curry is also playing Pennywise. Ah, so, yeah. yeah. Alex Garcia said, Clue, Perspectives. It's the original movie from the perspective of the anthropomorphic weapons that f- talk to each other about these crazy humans who keep killing each other. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's like a Pixar kind of thing where all the weapons have personalities. Oh, oh I like that. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Like, and maybe like their purpose, you know, like in movies, all these objects have to have, maybe their purpose is to be a murder weapon. Mm-hmm. It's like, when is my, when's it my turn? Like, when will I kill somebody? Mm-hmm. I mean, this, this is a very dark Pixar movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like, a, what's that, that favorite movie of yours? Uh, with the hot dogs that are self-aware oh god sausage, sausage party. party yeah yes. oh god yeah this, this I, is I, love, I love how you described that as the favourite movie of ours yeah, so, so good uh, hey it was yeah. a fun episode it was a fun episode often the worst movies make for entertaining episodes which mm-hmm. is fine yeah. Uh, Vanessa Riley said Escape Room but good and better mm-hmm. so I guess better than the current Escape Room movie which we've not seen but yeah. So, yeah. I feel like we should have gone to the cinema and done a bonus episode on that especially just to kind of tie in with the season well yeah if we'd had time we'd the time's passed the time's passed never mind uh, it clashed with Oscars it did yeah. it's we, we had to prioritise yeah. <laughs> David Hanloss said Clue 2 Body of Evidence new blackmail no- notes from the supposedly long dead Mr. Body are sent to the original cast and in some cases they're surviving relatives mm-hmm. Uh, and they meet up at the old mansion to determine who could be behind it. Oh, again, that, that's kind of similar to yours, Julio, as well, I guess, with the whole, like, relatives coming back and it reveals that they, you know, want to get revenge for their loved ones. Mm-hmm. Nick Roseblade said, It's 1988, 34 years after the original. All the cast members that can appear do appear in the same roles. Since that night, they've never met up again. Some have had a good run in the intervening years. Others haven't. Some have forgotten the original film. Others have been obsessed by it. But... Now they're reunited in another stately home, but there are extra characters, rooms, and weapons from the Cluedo Deluxe game. They have to work out why they've been reunited, who did it, and solve the mystery of the corpse on the stairs. Mm. So, yeah, that's workable. Yeah. Uh, over to Twitter, Blokebusters, at Blokebusters. I did a very lengthy one, so get comfortable. Great. The gang are on their way to prison following the Here's How It Actually Happened ending, which yes. is the last one. Yeah. Uh, the flames at the side of my face ending where Mr. Green goes home to have sex with his wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... <laughs> But before they get to prison... Oh, that's just so funny. It's a funny line. <laughs> but before they get there, they must stop at a hotel for the night. They are all sequestered separately, but one by one end up dead with a murder weapon by their sides. The main suspect is the real Mr. Body, who is, of course, Wadsworth the butler. Mm-hmm. But he's been under armed guard the entire time. Mr. Green is brought back to investigate. The film continues in this fashion with very over-the-top murder scenes and thick chalk outlines. In the end, only Mr. Body and Mr. Green are left... And then Mr. Green breaks down, telling Body that this wasn't supposed to happen and that he was supposed to be promoted. Mr. Body goes to speak, the lights go out, they come back on, 
Mr. Green is unconscious and Mr. Body is gone. We then see that the original Mr. Body has been helping the gang to escape by faking their deaths. He had intended the previous film's events to be proof of concept for blackmailing the group into paying him to fake their deaths as he faked his own at the hands of Wadsworth. I am lost. Um, <laughs> however, following the gang's real murders of multiple staff, he now knows that he can really make a lot of money from them this time. They all very quickly agree, and we see them go off to live in secrets. A year later, Mr. Green gets a strange letter on his desk with the word flames written across it and a picture of Mrs. White. <laughs> he smiles, grabs his coat, and credits. There's a third film in the trilogy, but that's a plot for another day. That was very needlessly complicated, yeah. but <laughs> directed very by David creative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, possibly David Lynch. Who knows? <laughs> but thank you, Blockbusters, for that. It's, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it, I mean, it, it, it's a tribute to the convoluted plot of the original. So yeah, you know. well, I like the proof uh, of concept idea that the, yeah, whole, the, the, the whole first movie is is not what it seems. It was just supposed to prove that you could pull it off. I guess. Yeah, I guess that's some, yeah. I think you followed it more closely than I did. Yeah, uh, Cinema Recall at Cinema underscore Recall said all the characters from the movie are in jail, and Tim Curry's character wants to bust them out to help stage a phony murder to expose another fraud with blackmailing. Things go wrong when the fake victim turns up dead, and the rest are now suspects in a fun whodunit mystery. So yeah. And finally, Foss Darts Pod said, "My heart says no sequel. Instead, we get a whole bunch of spin-offs. Same movie, same plot. It's just that some of them star Harry Potter at Hogwarts." <laughs> The Simpsons in Springfield, Sherlock across London. So I guess it's all just recasting in classic mm-hmm. franchises. Endlessly endless spin-offs, money forever. But Madeline Kahn is in all of them. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean that's going to be a challenge considering she's been dead for several years. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, same, sure, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah cool. So yeah, those are our list of submissions for this week. Mm-hmm. If you have any sequel ideas for Clue or any movies we've done in the past, please let us know. We are Beyond the Box Set. You can find us at beyondtheboxset.com. Our podcast is available on all good podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Acast, Google Play, and many more. Uh, you can also find us on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search Beyond the Box Set or at Beyond the Box Set on Twitter. Our Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Beyond the Box Set. And we have exclusive merchandise available at tpublic.com. Again, just search Beyond the Box Set. And Harry, we are leaving behind movies based on games for um, the time being. The time Sad- being, oh, sadly, sadly. Oh, we're going to come back to this. Well, you, you suggested it. Yeah, you, oh, you, yeah, maybe it will become a regular feature. But uh, oh, great. Until that day, <laughs> do you have a film for us for next week? Um, well, I have actually. I've got a few options. I've got four. Wow. Okay. Um, so, John, could you could you decide? Would you like me to pick okay. a fantasy movie, mm-hmm. a horror movie? Mm-hmm. A good action, oh sorry, a good sci-fi movie or a bad sci-fi movie? Of those four. Ooh. Is the bad sci-fi movie boring or silly? Potentially both. Oh. I, 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 I genuinely don't know how you're gonna how you're gonna react to it. It might be it might be silly and there will be some conversation points no matter what, or it might be boring. No, oh, sorry, and it might be boring. Okay. I'm going to go with it. I'm curious now. I'm going to go with the silly sci-fi. I do love a silly sci-fi. Are you? Yeah. Oh, you're going to regret that because you've three choices really good. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> do, do, you, do you want to take off the table? <laughs> you know, you know what? You know, you know what? Actually, I do. I've I've undersold it for myself enough that I don't want to do it anymore. Okay, fine. Or, or next episode. Okay. Um, so you've got, you got a fantasy, you've got a horror, you've got a sci-fi. Well, which one do you, are you strong? You will like them all. Okay. We did a horror recently. Mm-hmm. I do love a horror, but we have done one like in the last two weeks. mm mm-hmm. A good action film. They're, they're, they're all great films. Okay. Um, fantasy, horror, or sci-fi. I guess it's been a while since we've done our fantasy. Fantasy. We've done action, we've done horror quite recently. Okay, well, this is going to be a really good episode then. Okay. Um, so, as you know, listeners will probably know, the Oscars happened recently. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're both either very happy or very angry with the result. Yeah. Yeah, we're full disclosure, we're recording this before the Oscars, but this will come out after the Oscars. Yes. Yeah. So, I thought the Oscars this year were great. I thought the Oscars this year were awful. John, can you please edit the, uh, the, edit the, 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 the correct yeah. one? Yes, yeah. if you could. Anyway, uh, to, to, to one of the Oscars, I've had to, to uh, go back to last year's Oscars. And uh, to next week, oh, next episode, we're doing Shape of Water. Oh, okay. Ah. Interesting. I'm not re- Couldn't get my words out there. Yeah. Cool. I've not revisited that film since we watched it the first time. So Great. I great. think, I think that's going to be that's gonna be really fun. Yeah, I think that's a good, timely pick. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Excellent. Cool. Great. So. Well, um, thank you, Julio, very much for um, joining us this week. My pleasure. Is there anything that you'd like to plug, whether it be contrarians again, or just yard sales, or you know, Texas, <laughs> or uh, wind chimes? No, I'll. Uh, you know, speaking of the Oscars, we're 
we're doing a little bit of an uh, awards season uh, ourselves on the show. We're picking Oscar winning movies and Razzie winning movies. You know, so we go we get fresh and rotten. Uh, yeah, we just did uh, Star Trek Five: The Final Frontier, which is a Razzie winner, directed by William Shatner. Um, I don't know oh, if you guys wow. have seen it, if you're familiar with it, but basically Captain Kirk travels to the end of the universe and faces off against God. It's it's amazing. <laughs> it's weird uh, that I don't remember it because I have seen it. <laughs> and then, it uh, sounds memorable. I mean, it's it's basically everything you would want from Star Trek, you know, science versus religion, but directed mm-hmm. by William Shatner, so people didn't take to it. Uh, and we're <laughs> doing uh, The King's Speech next, uh, next week. That's our next episode. Which, oh, cool. Then, you know, Oscar winner. Um, mm-hmm. My co host, Alex, he, he has issues with Tom Hooper, so mm-hmm. it should be an entertaining episode. I am super excited for Cats because that movie is going to go one of two ways, and either way, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Same. Yeah. <laughs> what, sorry, what's the movie Cats? You know, the musical Cats, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the Tom Hooper, the director of The King's Speech mm. and Les Miserables, which I hated as a movie, uh, is, do, is directing a musical, produ- a, fi- a film musical production of. Cats. So a film of cats. Oh, I did know that because I heard people asking, like, well, are they going to be, like, cats or are they going to be people in cat costumes? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I think they're going to be people in cat costumes because it's not an animation. So Okay, cool. But the cast includes Taylor Swift and James Corden. So Ooh. this could really... I am, oh, I, I can't wait. I excited. cannot wait. Uh, I mean, even with James Corden in it, you, you're not turned off. So that's good. Well, I mean... I think you're more interested. I'm, in, I'm yeah. intrigued as to how much of a train wreck this is going to be. Oh, you yeah. want to see him fail. Yeah. Well, I don't want I don't want to see the movie. It's also got Ian McKellen in it and Judi Dench. So it's, you know, oh, it's and Jennifer good. Hudson. Look, there's some really good cast in there. But, I mean, you know. James Corden has been in some really good films. Such as? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I said that, because I can't think of one. I guess The History, the History Boys is a good film. I'll give it. Was he in that? Into That's the Woods what made him famous. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, into the wood. Well, it was okay. I, I wasn't. I didn't love it, but it was fine. Mm. Uh, anyway, we've gone way off topic. But yeah, oh, excited for <laughs> excited for your Oscar versus Razzie season. I think that's very that's a great concept, and I'm looking forward to hearing it. So go to wearethecontrarians.com. Uh, correct. Uh, on Twitter, we are at Contrarian Prime. We're also on the gram, like uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> like Harry said. Uh, Harry's said, infecting us with you speak. <laughs> At Contrarian Prime, uh, and then Facebook, facebook.com slash Contrarian Prime. Great. Cool. So, yeah, check them out. And, uh, yeah, join us next week for The Shape of Water. That's going to be a really That's good gonna episode. Be good. I'm excited I've, to rewatch that. I've not watched yeah. it back since the Oscars, so I'm excited to re-experience that one. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, great. Good call, Harry. Cool. So, right, thanks a lot. See you next week, guys. And thank you very much, Julio. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. See you later. Bye. <laughs>